uh, first of all uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, again thanks for setting up the stage to share our experience so that we can share our experience and you know spread the word what we are doing okay again now uh, uh, thanks to tom for the great presentation on rhds i liked it so okay let me get started as you know we presented this krishi iot again uh, let me start with the word the krishi itself the krishi is the uh, is originated from uh, even uh, in fact it took it from sanskrit language and it stands for agriculture so that's the uh, uh, word behind uh, choosing this krishi iot as the title of our project so we presented this krishi iot which is like a comprehensive open source iot solution which will help farmers so that they can execute their uh, day to day operations in a smarter and efficient way so that's the kind of you know um the aim of the project that we got so at the bottom you can see my contact details and you know feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions going forward also in fact uh, you can drop uh, you can stop my presentation in between if you have any further questions feel free to uh, so that it can be interactive discussion you know okay i'm going to next slide going to the next slide so uh, how it all started is uh, we need to have a cause i believe uh, some uh, so, yeah as the title of the presentation itself is saying what should it take to be a open iot challenge winner right so i really feel it uh, there should be a cause and of course not just the cause but there should be a fun around it and of course uh, the challenge it should be the challenging work and also thanks to open iot challenge organizers because uh, of the timelines that you guys have put in uh, that helps uh, us uh, really moving forward in the right direction and uh, keep uh, keep us in reality rather than really thinking big and you know uh, finally ending up uh, doing nothing instead of that uh, it is really good to have some kind of bounded uh, timelines so that we can have a bounded outcome just like krishi iot so uh, these definitely these open source technologies are uh, kind of uh, really cool and uh, it helps uh, realizing the iot solutions um, make uh, very quicker so i do not need to talk about eclipse iot as we all know there are there is too much of uh, in fact there are about 20 26 or 27 active iot projects going on starting from the devices layer gateway layer cloud platforms so on and so forth uh, who doesn't know raspberry pi here i am Pretty sure yeah, everybody is. A, it, it is kind of a de facto standard for IoT introduction on the devices layer for Raspberry Pi. So there is another uh, cool chip uh, that I came across, ESP8266, uh, to do some kind of a low-end computing. So this is a pretty cheap device. Uh, comes around four dollars, I guess, uh, with a Wi-Fi connection, and it does have some microcontroller as well. So. we also wanted to, as you know all these iot devices doesn't have a uh, head in the sense it doesn't have a console to interact with it or it doesn't have a usually sometimes it doesn't even have a, a digital display you do not know what is going on with the device so the ideal interface is the mobile app so ionic is another open source uh, hybrid mobile app uh, framework sdk sdk framework which provides uh, which helps in building uh, cross mobile app, cross, cross platform applications that means you can use our web languages like uh, javascript angular js you know the typical javascript frameworks and build mobile apps uh, for android and ios so that's the cool part of it okay this is about the motivation uh, the just to sum it up there is a cause and there is a fun and of course the challenge so these are the three combinations that uh, kept us going so with that uh, let me just give a brief introduction on uh, why krishi iot and what are the challenges and what does it offer so uh, we just like i mentioned in the earlier slide we just want to make uh, the life of a, a farmer better so uh, we started off what, what are the activities that a typical farmer do so of course he has to do the irrigation he has to uh, provide uh, enough water to the crop and the next thing is he has to monitor he, he needs to monitor the crop day day in and day out 
the neck uh, of course uh, based on the for example if there are diseases you need to take care of and uh, protect the crop the next thing is he also needs to play a role of uh, weather forecaster in the sense he needs to uh, kind of predict the weather and take some certain decisions so with a lot of machine learning and intelligence uh, coming from the other world the uh, can we share uh, this weather forecast information through this krishi iot to the farmer is another you know is the kind of thought process that has gone through so on the other hand coming to the challenges part of it again uh, this is uh, kind of envisioned in the context of india and uh, according to one of the fact books about 47 or close to 50 per 50% of the indian population rely on the farming so that means it is a pretty good number so the other biggest challenge here is availability of electricity to the uh, to these farming so yeah uh, in fact in some situations uh, there are about only 7 hours per day electricity is provided to this agriculture agriculture industry in india so in that uh, situation for example uh, with the iot in place how can we help uh, the farmer in switching on the motor for uh, just to pump the irrigation uh, just to provide the irrigation to the farming at least if we can provide an interface mobile interface of course in the iot world right now it is pretty cool that uh, one can uh, trigger a relay or a switch on switch off devices remotely right one can uh, do that many applications are there people are building so we thought uh, why can't we provide and tailor it to the agricultural application and provide an interface you know and uh, kind of solve this electricity issue the next thing is the network connectivity uh, right now you see i am not sharing my video because uh, the network is uh, bandwidth is not good here right now at least uh, the connection that i have so think about the situation in the uh, in the agricultural land of course we will not uh, definitely we will not be having the broadband connection so it will be gsm based uh, connectivity the next thing is the language barrier uh, in the context of india there are about 18 official languages so how does uh, a farmer kind of interact with a mobile app which is uh, in uh, let's say english language so the user interface has to be pretty easy to digest and uh, maybe if there is a local language support you know that's another uh, thought process that we got and uh, in fact uh, using uh, google translator we have built one krishi web application uh, uh, wherein you can see uh, the app in the regional languages uh, the uh, demos follows in the next slides of course so again the other problem is there is no off the shelf and affordable solution uh, in the indian context so that's why we thought okay why can't we offer a solution um, at least start offering a solution uh, using these open source technologies to provide this part irrigation and remote surveillance uh, typically using uh, the you know the camera feed and uh, showing it to the uh, farmer via the mobile app the next thing is uh, for example like i mentioned uh, weather information and soil moisture data can be shared to the farmer for example also the pest uh, pest bird control is another thing uh, uh, you know the guys are uh, the developers uh, community are building these uh, drones right uh, how about using the drone cameras uh, for farming also pest bird control so the next thing is uh, we can also keep up, uh, keep up, uh, updating and providing periodic updates to the farmers about the weather and uh, you know keep engaging with the farmer on the decisions that he can take uh, with the krishi iot mobile app in place in the farmer's hand so that's the kind of you know overview of uh, this krishi iot and the introduction of it uh, please go through the blog that we have created it has a pretty good documentation i guess and our thought process and also it has uh, whatever the projects that we have tried on and the priorities and our hands-on experience as well okay with that i'm going to the next slide so this is the architecture in a nutshell so starting with the devices layer uh, we built around five i mean in fact uh, for the open iot challenge we could able to build only four devices weather as it says uh, it provides the weather information like temperature and humidity so on and so forth for that we have used dht 22 sensor 
Uh, for switch, switch is nothing but a relay control. Uh, there, uh, uh, we have demonstrated using an electrical bulb, but uh, it can handle any electrical uh, motor as well, water pumping motor as well. Uh, next sensor is the earth sensor, which moist, uh, which uh, detects the soil moisture. The fourth one is the eye, uh, which is a camera connected to Raspberry Pi and streams the uh, live video uh, or even uh, one can take a uh, image on demand. That means from the mobile app, one can trigger the app uh, to take the image. So the next thing is uh, on the gateway layer, uh, we thought we wanted to be initially we wanted to build one gateway, uh, which is uh, which doesn't have any of the capabilities, but it kind of aggregates the data coming from these devices. But uh, after a while, uh, we thought, why can't we use one of these devices as a gateway itself? So that's when uh, we thought, OK, uh, switch can be used as a gateway. Uh, since it is always connected to the electrical pump motor, and in case of power outages, we can inform the uh, you know, farmer uh, like there is a, a power outage. So for the communication, we have used MQTT protocol. And as you have seen, uh, there are also time, uh, some kind of priorities assigned to these modules. In the sense, uh, P1 uh, being the higher priority, P2 being the lower priority. So initial thought was uh, we wanted to use this Kapuga project, which is pretty cool, I believe. Uh, and going forward, it will have a lot of traction by the way I see it. Uh, because uh, the, it is kind of aggregating uh, are going to be the open source IoT cloud platform offering at the moment. Uh, but uh, right now, it is at a 0 0.20. And we could not really build uh, the entire Krishi IoT solution based on it. But we hope uh, we'll do it in the future going forward. A uh, Hawkbit, if you guys are not aware, it is uh, to update the software on the devices remotely. So that's what uh, Hawkbit does. And uh, Hono is another interesting project where it kind of, you know, provide multi-protocol connectivity. For example, if your device is talking uh, MQTT, yeah, you can uh, send the data to Hono. HTTP, you can send it to Hono. In future, uh, they have a promise of uh, providing co-op or lightweight machine to machine adapters and hono provides one nice interface that means amqp using only amqp backend application one can listen to multiple protocol devices so that's the beauty of hono so we experimented with hono and kapua and uh, the our study and uh, our information is kind of documented in the blog please go through it and if you have any questions please feel free to share to us so the next thing, uh, moving under the application layer, so we have used Ionic framework, which internally uses Apache Cordova project. So that helps us uh, build in, uh, building Android and iOS apps. In fact, we build Android app and it is available in the Amazon App Store. Uh, please go through the blog and you know uh, try and install it and please share the feedback. The project code is available in the GitHub. So again, it is MIT license. We can work together and you know uh, make it happen. So yeah, there is another interesting thing uh, that we used IBM Cloud Foundry. In, uh, for example, in cases where one cannot install mobile app, we thought uh, you know using IBM Cloud Foundry, we installed the. Uh, we provided a kind of a web application, which is almost alike of this mobile app, and it also has this cool feature of this language translation. So this is about the architecture in a nutshell and also the overview on timeline, everything in one slide. So I'm going to the next slide, uh, which is uh, pretty much the demos. So yeah, the other project that I did not cover in the previous presentation was the Eclipse Vertov. Um, this Vertov project uh, we felt is pretty cool because uh, we were able to create a video of about six minutes in which we were able to install the Watto plugin and create a device information model and build a web application which show, which shows the uh, you know sensor information like temperature and humidity you can see it in the youtube link provided over here i hope these slides will be shared to you guys so i'm not gonna do the live demo here please go through that and if you have any comments and of course these are available in the blog as well like I was saying, and uh, there is a mobile app demonstration. Of course, the web app demonstration. These videos are available in YouTube. Please uh, check it out and let us know your feedback. Finally, uh, 
going ahead uh, we not want to really stop here uh, we thought this is a great opportunity that we have got to work for this challenge and uh, also we have got a lot of interest from other folks around here who are interested and kind of committed to work on this project so people are joining us uh, to really make this as a reality so please share this word and feel free to contribute to it this is again open source uh, github project please uh, provide stars as well uh, that also helps us of course last but not the least if you can donate that will be the awesome thing so if you have any questions yeah please feel free to ask me now